Welcome everyone, I'm Dominic, CTO and co-founder of DropSolid and welcome to our podcast, the Open Digital Experience Podcast. We will be talking about content management systems, digital experience platforms, everything you need to build the best customer experience. We will be talking about Drupal, Matic, everything open source to do this and we will be interviewing experts from inside our company and also outside our company. So, if you have 30 minutes, you go on a bike ride, go on a, a, a drive, put on our podcast and enjoy and learn everything digital experience. Hello everyone, welcome to the Drop Solid podcast. Today I have as my guest Frederik Waters, senior enterprise architect, and we are going to talk about AI and DXP. So Frederik, just for everyone beginning with DXP and AI, what is it? Well, a di digital experience platform, and that's what the DXP stands for, actually consists of three pillars. So it's first content management, then there's marketing automation and there's personalization. And those three pillars work together that make it from a simple CMS where you also use the data of the client so you can improve the, the digital experience of the user. And this makes a digital experience platform what it is. Um, what does AI have to do with that? Well, there's an AI, um, there's AI possibilities in each of these pillars. In content management, but we'll talk about that more later, there's multiple AI uh, possibilities. For personalization, this is one of the key pillars of the DXP. There, we use AI also extensively to personalize the page visits to the user. All right. Beautiful summary, Frederik. Hey, I think you have to had to had explain that uh, to a lot of people already. <laughs> uh, affirmative, yes. <laughs> So yeah, but maybe we break it down, uh, AI, uh, because we have these different components, uh, the content, the data, the automations. Maybe just explain a little bit like, okay, what can AI do in CMS? What can it do in marketing automation? What can it do in CDP? Yeah. Um, okay, let's start with CMS. There's many things to say about this. I think it's a great subject and I, I'm very interested by it. So interrupt me when I'm rambling, but uh, here I go. Uh, so content management, I think what's interesting there is, yeah, everybody knows with the GPT, you can generate media, you can generate text, you can generate all these things. And of course, the open source ecosystem, they haven't been sitting on their hands. Uh, what they're they're uh, very active and the modules are popping up everywhere. So content modules are being created where you can generate media in Drupal automatically. You can generate content. You can do audio transcription. Eh? So you can do speech to text or text to speech within Drupal using the OpenAI APIs or other uh, modules, other API, AI providers as well. So these modules are existing already. There's also, you can change the tone of voice of your content. You can have automatic node titles, automatic taxonomy terms, automatic descriptions, all from within the familiar uh, content management system that you've always known. Um, what's also there is um, translations. Yeah? So the traditional Drupal uh, nodes, you can have a translation, you have to start translating. Now these things can be fully automatically translated, but there's more advanced possibilities as well. Since the API of uh, these modules expose the functionality, you can, for example, have your custom input of an end user and have automatically return it a list of JSON terms from that content or these kinds of integrations. You can go really far with this. There's even companies focusing more and more on that. You see that in the market, uh, this ecosystem is growing rapidly. And so the content management part of the DXP has been really expanding and growing very fast. This gives us the power uh, in our CDP as well, in our uh, DXP as well, to give you the possibilities to do very advanced content management where it used to be more traditional, more limited. All right, and, and, and if we look at Drupal in specific, it seems to me uh, uh, that, uh, that Drupal is, um, is a match made in heaven for AI. Yes, that's correct. 
lots of AIs are being trained on public data and the luck that we have in the open source ecosystem is that everything we do is in the open. So the AIs are being trained with open source data and these integrations make it super, super fast and super easy. I've worked with developers, I've seen them develop. They even use Copilot to generate Drupal modules and work multiple times faster than they used to do one year ago. And so there we have a, a big step forward on the proprietary systems with our open source tooling. And I imagine also because Drupal is so structured with content types and taxonomies and entities and fields and yes, the AI I, must be loving it. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, uh, it, uh, you can give it you can give it way more structure than if you would give it a blob of HTML, for example. So you can really give it much more structured context, which allows it to give much better responses in the end. Yeah. And what about marketing automation? Well, there it's the same. Eh? Um, Mautic has been growing pretty rapidly uh, recently as well. And there, same things apply. You're also generating content, which is then exposed via email channels. Well, there you also have the content generation. You can use the media generation input. Uh, also, speech to text, text to speech is not relevant here in an email, but tone of voice. Uh, changing the tone of voice of a text is certainly relevant or making automatic descriptions. Yeah, these things are also uh, applicable to Mautic. Uh, so they can really improve the speed that you can go to market or go to production with your newsletter uh, by a, a factor. Yeah, so now we're talking about productivity gains, basically. Yeah? So the, the operator of the CMS, the webmaster and the marketeer is using Mautic and Drupal and they're gaining productivity speeds. Are, are there any other uh, returns on investment of using AI? Yeah, um, I think the biggest are the, the more efficient use of your time, uh, automatic descriptions, things that used to take um, editors hours and hours are now being done almost instantaneously. You just have to do a quick check and, and it's done. So you really gain lots of time there. Um, and I on the that, end user side? Well, the experience, of course, obviously uh, wins as well. Huh? So since um, the editors have more powerful tools, they can provide better experience to the end user. So the end user obviously also gains. Um, on the other side, for an end user, they have a personalized experience. This personalization is also provided by an AI. Huh? So there, when the AI improves and the data improves, the end users also have a better user experience. Oh yeah, so it's double, double, double ROI for uh, because of using the the AI. Now, when people hear AI, always uh, the the question pops up. Uh, okay, I don't want to uh, I don't want to give too much data to the AI, especially not my personal data. And I also, as a company, I don't want to give them all all the uh, IP I've been generated. Uh, building on my databases, which maybe I have been building for decades. Um, I just want to throw it in, in into uh, some AI uh, system. C can you talk a, a little bit more about that? Are there solutions for that? Or um, I recently had a very good question about AI. that. I recently had a very good question about that. So uh, imagine the client has a system where people buy to consume this content, this content they have been generating for years on end, uh, the expensive content, and I have to buy a subscription to be allowed to see this content. If, if I, as a client, index all this content into my own GPT, yeah, you could end your subscription and just query the data of, of, of your data provider. But then the, the essential thing is us, where we manage the content, this is the true source of data. And actually, this highlights for me the value of the CMS in this uh, ecosystem of, of AI and things. The true value of the data is not that you have a one-time photo of where the, the data is created, but you have a constant uh, source of true data where your editors are constantly working on and improving and providing the new data. And this is the, the role of the CMS. And I think it's super important there. And it will only be more important in the future because AIs can generate all this random data and random text. But the true, the true data will be those in the sources in the CMSs that are managed by the companies and the governments around the world. So the truth is really valuable then? Well, I, in my opinion, yes. It always is. 
And uh, if one would want to have such an own chat GPT, how, how do you do that? How is that even possible? Yes, yes. Uh, um, what I... Uh, I call it not a, an own GPT because GPT is trained on the data of the internet. And I'd rather have it a semantic search on top of your own data. And then you also have control on the freshness of the data. They call it sometimes semantic search, but also they sometimes call it retrieval augmented generation. Uh, so that's, uh, retrieval augmented generation. It's the, the AI term uh, for uh, we, we, what we do is we find the data from your content source, it which has been indexed into a into a vector store. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna generate a response to you based on your question. So if I ask, for example, uh, which is the, the best DXP in the world on the drop solid side, it will use all the content from the drop solid side. It will say, okay, these and these responses are most relevant and it will generate a response based on your question. You're looking for the most response, most the best uh, digital experience platform. This is the best digital experience platform. And it will also give you the reference to the page or the URL where this content lives on your site. All right. So basically, if I understand correctly, if you are sitting on a lot of valuable content in a database, in a CMS that's being updated all the time, which is a source of truth, you can actually have your own model, throw questions to that model. The model is trained based on your content and it will answer as if you would be calling a company and you would have someone on the phone and he would have all the knowledge of the company and he would give you the answer correctly uh, so um what i see there is uh, i've contact with multiple companies that have contact center employees which do nothing else than just answering questions of civilians or clients or they just do nothing else than replying to mails or answering questions via the, the system all these questions can be automatically answered already if you just replace the search bar in your site by asking a question and a semantic search it will give you the response from your site and so uh, these for for companies where you have people answering questions where you have a frequently asked questions section in the website these things are going to become less relevant because a, a semantic search replaces all that, I think. Okay, so yeah, I, I guess uh, if I'm just calculating the business case uh, in my mind, it just depends on uh, how many customer service representatives you have. And... and you can free them up to have give your clients a better experience, maybe do some proactive work on... Uh, making sure that the clients are a good, being held properly or these things, and then you can have much better experiences in the end, which is, of course, what we want. Yes, and you become far more scalable because you can, maybe you have employees to serve a thousand customers, but with this semantic search, the same set of employees can serve like 10,000 customers and the AI is doing 90% of the work and only 10% actually comes uh, to a human uh, human interaction. Yeah, and the cool thing about it is you can even um, ask the end users for the quality of the feedback. And if you don't like it, these things you can be curated and be improved even. And actually, the, the improving is just improving the content because it's using your own content base. And this is actually feedback for the editors. We see that there is a gap, for example, in the content about this or this specific product. People ask some questions and they think the responses aren't so good. Well, then it's time for the editors to write a nice article about this content gap in the website and they can really do the curation, do good editing and give a nice, and then the responses in the future will be handled properly there. Awesome. Let's say a, a customer who has private data wants to run a proof of concept. What do they need to do? Um, what needs to happen? How much effort is it? The setting up of a proof of concept for this kind of semantic search? Yes. It's pretty simple to set up. So um, in um, there are some Drupal modules already uh, that exist that we can install to have to index your existing content into this vector database. And then you need to, of course, install this um, this kind of uh, search interface, uh, the, 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 the search box, the search form, which then also provides you with the answers to your questions. And so there's the twofold thing. But these things are already provided by the Drupal community. So, um, but to make them 
your own, the DNA of the client. You probably want some theming left and right and maybe have it look a little bit different. So that's, I think, uh, might be the most work. But then you're using an external service, I suppose. Correct. Yeah. Then you're not you're not uh, working in a sovereign mode where you're you're indexing in your own uh, in your own model. Yes, that's a big difference. So that's, yeah, absolutely. Um, if you're using cloud services, there we would be using embeddings from OpenAI, for example, a vector store out of the cloud could be from Azure or could be from uh, Pinecone or from other uh, providers, and you use a, a language model, an LLM. Yeah. So these three tools are required. You could host them yourself, but that's quite uh, quite the burden to do that. Yeah. Then you probably need a, a platform company. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Which uh, which we can do, of course, eh? but uh, <laughs> it's a bit more difficult, mm -hmm. but not impossible. Um, no, no. no, it's certainly not impossible. Um, no, it's and actually it's a really cool technology. Uh, you see, uh, with embeddings, for example, OpenAI, they expose this to people uh, a few months now, uh, and you see many other companies also providing embeddings uh, AI models. So there's all, uh, multiple uh, providers that also provide this embedding service now, and you can host it yourself. There's even open source embeddings models there. So uh, this, yeah, is, well, this just... ecosystem is growing so fast; it's really hard. To, uh, I, I was I was just going to ask that like there's there's a lot a lot of things happening in uh, in open source around uh, around AI and and I, yeah this is can you can you talk a bit more about this uh, Frederick what what opportunities you uh, you see will, will will people soon have their own uh, ChatGPT running everyone will have it or or where where are we if you look at the future. The possibility is certainly already there uh, for everybody to have their own GPT. Um, but it depends, of course, on where you want your data to be. If you want your data to be in a secure place, uh, then we're talk talking about not using cloud services, using maybe uh, secure cloud services or your own uh, sovereign services, then it's an entirely different thing. And so based on the requirements, I think that makes a big difference. But currently, it's a very low bar. You can already very easily install a semantic search onto any CMS or DXP. These, these things are uh, being done. If you say, okay, I wanna have my highly redacted secure content in a secure environment and not just in any open AI service, yeah, then we're talking about something else as with any integration. Uh -huh. um, in open source, I think, yeah, all of these services, open source is growing there as well. Um, it's growing fast and the, the ecosystem is uh, evolving very, very rapidly. So in the end, I don't know about the future. It's That's very hard to do predictions about that, but I think uh, it, it's... Will, will, will every website have its own, uh, its own brain? Will it, will it have like, for example, things that, that pop, popped into my mind recently was like let's say i'm having a conversation with uh, which is such a smart chatbot uh, on a on a website and i'm i'm asking him questions about certain products and services or or maybe i'm already a customer and i'm asking like okay uh, tell me something about my orders or my status or whatever i'm doing with with your company or or organization that is just generates web pages, especially for me that it just generates emails using using Drupal and Matic, but it instructs them to on the fly create um, the best experience for me. Like how, how far are we from from these types of uh, um, interactions? I think not so far. I think. Um all of what you're saying is just richer context to generate better output and better output integrations. And so what I certainly see happening is that, for example, if you're logged in into a specific site and then you ask the search a specific question that it knows that you're logged in, that maybe gives you extra permissions and allows you to query more or less information with your, with your uh, question that you ask it. Also, 
if you ask maybe a report for this client or for that client that it gives you a more visual style report with graphs or with stats or all these kind of things yeah these things are for me not in the far future that's i think in the near future what will be the hardest is i think for the companies to integrate it into their systems uh, the, the the technology is already there i think it's just about being the company that integrates it and provides it to the customers and then making the the, the difference with other companies because uh, you see it in in uh, specific apps as well that the company that does these integrations yeah they gain they gain the market uh, because yeah, it's it makes it so easy to use their products that all the other things are not even considered anymore uh, so how relevant is it then to have a website to have a cms a marketing automation email system a system that tracks user uh, behavior data um for me i think in all these ai things uh, generating content is super easy but the value of true redacted content will still be there they the editors will have the tools to improve their redaction process or maybe speed up the editing process or whatnot but the the, the content repository as is is still going to be relevant and important and the content in there is going to be the true source of feeding it might feed all these other zpts out there if you want or if you don't want it will happen probably um, marketing automation people will still need to be contacted for for all kinds of reasons and so it, it's always going to be there the need and i think personalization uh, to have the third pillar of the dxp so we currently we're already using um, ai to make the segments in personalization well semantic search is just the next step because you cannot have a more personalized uh, response than the answer to your question yeah. Yeah, that's that's I think it's I that's my my vision as well, uh, Frederick. That I think that uh sometimes you think oh every everything is changing into a chatbot. Why do I still need a website? But actually the AI can use the website to communicate to the user, the AI can use the email program to communicate to the user. We still will use the same things, but it will be piloted by the by the AI, that's 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 what I think uh, is uh, is the future. And you can only leverage the AI if you have all the other systems already in place. Because what else? How is it going? It cannot operate in a vacuum. Correct. It's the integrations that make the big difference. Eh? So the the amount of integrations and the quality of integrations that will make the big difference. Uh, I agree. Yeah. So yeah, if you like, as a, as an enterprise architect who is working with uh, IT uh, managers and uh, CIOs all the time, and uh, and IT professionals working on these integrations, what are like the biggest challenges these uh, professionals are facing at the moment? I think uh, that's a very good question. So. I noticed that in architecture, having a clear understanding of which, because this is new technology and it's not clear in traditional architectures where this is going to be and how this is going to be integrated with all of these systems. I think having a clear picture on your own architecture is already super important. It's not always the case that you have a clear view on your own architecture. That's the basis. And then being able to plug this in and say, okay, we want to have all these content sources. Maybe you have a, a knowledge base or maybe you have uh, a CMS as well, or you can have extra resources, multiple websites that you want indexed into a semantic search, and then you can have a clear point of entry where these questions will, will be answered. You can also have your mailing system integrate with that, because mails can automatically be answered, or or the the, temp, the, the answer can be provided to the employee so they can validate this is correct, and then the mail is sent and they win minutes or or hours of time this way. And so. Um, yeah lots of challenges yeah the integrations i think <laughs> will make it uh that, that's what make what makes it difficult for for uh clients and I, this is a following this this comes because if you have a clear vision on your architecture and you have a clear view on architecture then it will be easier than if you don't have that then it will be harder so organizations who don't have their IT organization in order, they will really struggle to leverage the the benefits AI is bringing. That, I think that's uh, correct, yes. Yeah, so I imagine if you're not able to 
leverage the AI, automate tasks, you'll, you'll, your organization will, yeah, will be far more expensive and, and, and far less uh, customer friendly. Yeah, yeah, and it will be more isolated as well. Eh? If your organization has a more uh, spread approach and there's multiple uh, different aisles with their own systems, yeah, you can do a, a proof of concept in one system, but it will not use the knowledge base from the other aisle. And then, yeah, what are you actually doing? Then? Like breaking silos. I'm, I'm having like a flashback from uh, 10 years ago where, where the, the, the story was already breaking the silos, uh, the main buzzword back then was digital transformation um, some did it some didn't and i guess those who did it uh, will leverage ai and then those who didn't will even fall behind even further yes yeah that sounds very very correct uh, very plausible yeah right okay frederick i see we are running out of time uh, thank you very much good talk with you for hours um but uh, let's let's call it a day. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dominic. Bye. Have a nice day. Bye bye.